Today is the eighth day of December 2014, and we are very pleased to have Suda with us. Yes. Welcome, Suda. Hi, it's a Welcome. big surprise Namaskar. for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have so many things to cover. Shall we begin with uh, your family and how they heard of Mother and Sri Aurobindo? My father was born in a village of Gujarat, and he studied there for the first few years. And then he went to higher and higher centers of education. And when he was in class 12, he writes in one of his diaries, okay, in the classroom, as the national movement was at the full peak at that time, the classroom was covered with all the national leaders' photographs. And one among them was totally different. And that face would catch his eye, and he would keep on looking at it, not hearing what the teachers were saying. And then he writes, okay, and after some time, a sort of silence would descend upon me, and I would get lost in it. So that is the beginning of his contact with Shirobindo, because that face was Shirobindo's face. But he didn't know it at the time? No, no. I see. It was that, you know, young age photo. Yeah. Then afterwards, when he grew up and he went to a higher education point in Bharuch, also in Gujarat, there there was those Akhadas which Abhi Purani and uh, his brother Chotu Bhai Purani had started. So he was in that. So one evening he saw that further away one person is sitting on a well and just observing all these students doing their activities. And he said, oh, that person is not of this world. He's coming from somewhere else. And when everything was over, he went to that person and started asking questions. Very many questions he asked. So then that was A.B. Purani. And he had just come from Pondicherry there. So he says, look, my child, if you want to know some further, you write your letters to Sri Aurobindo, send it to me, post it to me, ah. because Sri Aurobindo is not reading. I have to read out. And whatever he answers, I will write back to you. What year was this, Sudha? I think 1935 or a little before that. Around that A little that time. before that, mm -hmm. yes. So in that way, their uh, correspondence continued. And then I was born, and he had to earn some more money. And then with that more money coming in, he felt like coming to Pondicherry. So he asked Purani ji, I feel like coming. So Purani asked Sri Aurobindo, he wants to come. Let him come for the darshan and stay as long as he can. So that was the beginning. And he started coming, staying a few days, going back, going back. Then finally in 45, he came for the 21st darshan, mother's birthday. And then his birthday was coming on 22nd March. So he stayed on for that birthday. So when, at that time, we, there used to be regular pranams. Everybody would go in the morning to the mother, in the meditation hall. You see that yes. big picture is there? there. So when he went to do, he did his pranams, and then he put his open palms for her to put flowers and all. She held the two hands. And looking in his eyes, she says, Sri says, if Sundaram wants to stay on in the ashram, he can stay. So, I don't know what went on with him, but he took his flowers, blessed, mother blessed him, and he stayed on. After some days, he asks the mother, during the same pranam time, Mother, what about my child and wife? And then you say, Mother would never give any decision by herself. So she tells Sundaram, I will ask Sri Aurobindo. So when she puts the question to Sri Aurobindo, 
Shirobindo immediately counter questions, why does he think of them? So the next day again mother holds his hands and tells him, Shirobindo asks why does he think of them? You see mother would repeat the exact sentences that Shirobindo would speak. So my father stopped thinking about us. And then again after some few days, Shirobindo tells the mother, tell Sundaram to bring his child and wife here. So when he went for the pranam next morning, mother stopped him. Shirobindo says, you can bring your child and wife here. So then he made arrangements and friends packed up things and all. And my mother and I, we were here on April 22nd of the same year. So everything from 21st February to 22nd April. And April 24th was my first darshan of Sri Aurobindo. I see. In 1945. 45. Can you speak a little bit about it? No, I wouldn't remember anything. Wouldn't? No. Only I was just, what you would say, stupefied at the posture, at his color. I said, he's a god. That's all I remember, uh, yeah, nothing much. Yeah. Now you mentioned that your father was corresponding with Sri Aurobindo. Do you still have some of those letters? We don't have my father's letters, but we have all the answers that uh, Puraniji gave. I see. Yes. And those have been published also. Puraniji brought out a book, mm -hmm. three volumes of his letters. Oh. So there they is. I think my father's are about 42 or something like that in number. Hmm. Now, your father was a poet. Hmm? Your father was a poet? Yes. Tell us about that. It's, it's, and one, in one of the uh, readings to Sri Aurobindo, Puraniji showed a photo of Sundaram. Okay, this is Sundaram, our great poet. Then Sri Aurobindo looked at the picture, photograph. He will one day come here. Yes, that was announced before it was sort of... So then so you had your first darshan of Sri Aurobindo in 1945. Hmm. How many darshans did you have then? Many? I don't know. Once I had counted from 1945 to 1950, minus one when I had the measles and our doctor didn't allow me to go. And second time also I was sick somewhere and I couldn't go. So two darshans I missed. So you can calculate now how many yeah. times. Yeah. But you must have remembered something of the last darshans, the last few darshans, mm. when he was sitting there with mother. Last darshan? No. No. Mm. Many people say they're just blank. They remember nothing. I, I don't know. How old would I have been in 1950? 13 years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Things were not very seriously felt, I suppose. But when we were, when he was laid on his bed last, a friend came early in the morning. Sundaram, get ready and come to the ashram. What, what, don't ask any questions, you come. So we got ready and we went and there was already a queue going up to Shirobindo for the darshan. And he was lying there and he looked so majestic and so Wonderful, that's the only thing I can say. But then when we came down, we, we went to Puraniji's room, because Puraniji was a very close person too. And then Puraniji looked at me, so you went and saw our Lord? Then I said, but he is a God, why people are saying that he is dead? Gods cannot die. If that was the child conception. And then Puraniji just, you know, fondled my head and hugged me. He was a very loving person, yes. very loving. So let's talk about the years then after that. Did you grow up in the ashram? Yes. Tell us about your education and your life in the ashram. I don't know much about that. It's as, as well for everyone as for me. But I have made a note on my paper 
about the interesting things, not interesting, the valuable incidents or moments with the mother. Wonderful. Hmm? Yes, we'd be very grateful to hear. So see this coming to Pondicherry, Sri Aurobindo asking us to come to Pondicherry. That is my first one. No, actually it's the second one. The first one, when we were in Ahmedabad, we had a big house and a big garden all around. So my father used to do the gardening and I would come and play around. And then when in a certain season, the you know, the very top leaves, they're russet colored and shining, tiny ones, you know, on a rose plant. I would pick them up, put them in an empty matchbox, and tell Papaji, when we go to the ashram, I will give this to the mother. She will love this. They're so beautiful. He didn't say anything, you know, he just let me play around him. So that was the first contact with uh, mother. Uh, rather, if you go back, I'm going backwards, no problem. When Sundaram was coming and going to Pondicherry and Ahmedabad, he told the mother that we would like to meditate in my bungalow. Mother said yes. She gave him two photographs. And she said, Saturday, 6 p.m., I will be there. So that, you can say, was the first center. And there were three people coming. So in one small room, they would put, you know, that Indian stool for dining, they have a flat, mm -hmm. put nice clean white cloth, put the photos, and they would just close the door and meditate, three of them at the beginning. And I would be playing around, and once in a while I would quietly open the door, get in, and sit in my father's lap. So that was my first meditation, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so that was that. So then when we came here, I joined the school. And we were just growing up, studying, playing, cycling, going for outings, picnics, and everything. But we are told that uh, everyone had Full access to mother, many times a day. Yes, that was what I was going to say. But then, every day was a, just a darshan. And a child, what does it need to go and meet her many times? There are no questions to ask, or, or at least I didn't have, you know. But then one birthday of mine, our last pranams would be after she came back from the playground. She would open the staircase door and come there and we would have been waiting on the staircase and we would go up to her. So on one of my such birthdays, I was sitting in the landing and waiting for her to come and open the door. And suddenly I hear a loud, strong voice of mother's attendant, you know, Lakshmi Bai was there. She's telling mother, you don't have to open the door, mother. There is no birthday today. And before I could feel anything, I hear mother saying, no, I have to go. Sudha is waiting. And in the next sentence, I hear the click of the door, oh. and she's standing there. And I go to her, her, do my pranam. I stand with my two palms joined like that. She, she puts plenty of flowers, plenty of sweets. And then she keeps on caressing my face, my head, the, all the arms and everything. And I still have that memory of that soft, smooth hand, you know, fragrant hands. And then after plenty of caresses and all, she would put a parting kiss on the forehead. And then with that, she would go back and I would come down and go. So why I find this interesting? Because her words, I must go, Sudha is waiting. It was at that time when I was very, I was a child still. But even now, wherever I am and something is disturbing me, something is not quite all right inside, I just sit and sit and think of her and say, Mother, and she's there. I can feel her presence. 
So this little event to very of my many of my friends and visitors who come, they all want to know, tell us something about the mother. So this is one thing I share with them. And I tell them, if you also wait quietly, she will come to you. You just have to learn to wait. They're happy, you know. You made some notes. I hope they're not so going to catch this. Sure. So the leaves, how I came to Pondi, so I... Okay. In 1971, in 70, mother sent word to all the departments, department heads, okay, there will be a special darshan of the mother for them and one person from the department. That means two from each department. So from our department, Sri Aurobindo Karyalaya, my father was there and I was to go with him. So we all went, many, all the department heads were there, everyone sitting so quietly, quiet. It's a very solemn affair, yes. And Champaklalji came out and told us, everybody will just pass in front of the mother. Nobody should touch her feet or her knees or her hands. On the tray on his side are sweets for everyone. You will pick up your one packet and move on. So that is what we all did. Yeah. What uh, what year? Uh, what month was this? January one one seventy one. One one seventy one. Yes. So we came out and then we went home. Within the whole day of mine, I was somewhere dazed and lost. And then I said, I have to write to mother. So I wrote, and I always wrote in French, you know, uh -huh. yeah. So I said, Mother, yesterday when we came to you, you took me somewhere, I don't know where, but I cannot forget that land. I hope I can grow more and more into that land. Then Nalinida took my letter, gave it to Mother. Mother sent me a special rose. Then comes my birthday on 3rd April, same year. So on my birthday, I went to her. She again caresses you and puts her lips on your forehead and all. And the way, whatever she puts in us through her eyes and all, I came home and I said, what love, how much love, what the kind of unique love Nobody on earth can give me this. I must have, I must become worthy of this. More and more, it must fill me up. So again, I wrote a letter to the mother. Yesterday, when I came to you on my birthday, you have given, you have made me feel a kind of love which I have never felt up to now. And where I don't think I'll ever find it anywhere. Make me worthy of your love more and more. That's all. Again, Nalinida took the letter upstairs. Then when I went next day, did she say something? Yes. He was very happy, all smiles. Yes, she will see you on every third. Hmm? I said, all right. Is that time I don't remember when there was... On the third of every month? Yes. So then, that was April, then comes May. And I know third is coming, but I don't know how many days in advance I don't want to go. I myself am surprised, why do I not want to go? I must go. She wants to see me, I must go. And again, no, I don't want to go. I'll not go. That inner tug of war continued. And finally, I did go to her. But then when I came down Narad, my whole body was aching, aching like anything. And it was hot, too hot, almost like a fever. And top to bottom aching. It took me about three days to 
for that fever and aches to move out. Then again, after May comes June, same struggle, I don't want to go. I want to go. I must go. I must go. Again I went. Same thing when I come down, the body is aching less and the head, everything is aching, but it's a little less intense, can bear it. Then comes July, 3rd of July. When I come down, the ache is only up to here, up to the shoulders, nowhere else, only the top half. Then August, 3rd August, when I came down, it was up to the neck, but it was there, hot and aching, aching. Then from September, I was totally normal. And I think after one or two months, I was really looking forward, I want to go. Why are there not two thirds in every month, you know, something like that. But then it continued till 73. Till 73? 1973. Oh my gosh. In March, March 3rd, I went to her. Then that time she had more or less stopped seeing people. Then my father's birthday, March 22nd, we both used to go always together on my birthday, on his birthday also. So Champak Lalji said, let us know. She may ask you to come in or she will send you flowers, but you come and wait. So we were sitting in the mother's room, middle floor, and then Champak Lalji came down with a big card for my father roses and flowers and all. She said, Mother has sent this for you, but she will not see you. So that was the March 3rd was our last visit to Mother, both of us together. But 73. Hmm, 73. Then on April 3rd, I went and sat. That was my real birth date also. Then again, Champaklal brought me flowers and all and says, Beta, she's not seeing anyone. Be happy with what she has said. I said, it's all right. Because we knew she was going through some things. So it was always a question mark, whom she would see, whom she would not see, how long and all. But anyway, so then after that, you know what happened after 73 and all. So then I calculated from 3rd April 71, to 3rd March 73. It makes my visits total up to 24 continuous visits. So what work she did in me, she would know, but I would, I do feel it sometimes, what was being done. These two 24 months were very special for me, very special. What work do you do in the ashram? What work have you done? What department? In 61, I finished my studies. Where do I go for work? Mother says, you will work with Sundara. No place. Wherever, whatever he wants to do, uh -huh. you have to be with him. So I would go to the press in the mornings. In the afternoons, I was a teacher in the school. Evenings would be our group activities and all. What did you teach? Hmm. What did you teach? In the f very first years, they started me off with biology because they had no teacher for biology. <laughs> but it was a very happy experience. And Kake, hmm? he was one of my students at that ah. time, first year. Ah. So the first class is over. Then he does this. I said, yes, Kake. He's saying, vous savez, Sudamin, vous avez répété, n'est-ce pas, n'est-ce pas, trente-trois fois. I said, oh, you counted all that. You get the point? No, you, see, you have to give it in the English teachers also have a, for people. The teachers have a mannerism, no? So it seems I must have got this phrase, n'est-ce pas, vous comprenez? Because our medium was French, so we would speak in French. So after every two, three sentences, I would say, Nespa, Nespa. So this young child, he must have been counting. And at the end of the class, he says, you have counted 
We have spoken this 33 times or some figure he gave. <laughs> and Tara told us so many stories about Kaki. Yes. And how, how he mother. would run up to mother. Yes. If he had a bruise, he would show mother his knee. Yes. <laughs> I would like to also ask you about the elder disciples and your contacts with them. Uh, Nolini, Pavitra, Amrita, and so forth, Madhav Pandit. You see, my father came to the ashram via Puraniji, sort of, right. right? So he was more or less working with Puraniji, meeting together and thinking together. But mother had given him work in the dining room. You know, Ravindraji used to take a cart of tiffins. Mm -hmm. That was his first work. Oh. And he was very sensitive to heat. So walking in the sun and in spite of the chapels, his feet would become very hot. Then when you have to open some sadhak's door, that knob would be very hot because the sun has been shining on it. Then after the round is done, they have to go back to the dining room. And Sundaram had to wash the cart. So all the tiffins are given for washing. That grill which holds every tiffin in place, is taken out, then you have to soap and water and scrub and all. And then one day, while he was scrubbing, he said, this, where was I unhappy in Ahmedabad? That I, a poet, I have to do this kind of job. That was that I was there still, you see, because he knew very well. He was the top poet in Gujarat, yes. At the age of 22, he won an award, which now people are getting at 60, 65 or something like that. And then after that, there were a series of awards. But then immediately he understood what is speaking in him about this. So then he threw that away and he continued his work. Then there's another interesting thing. In the dining room before, we used to have those enamel dishes and bowls. You know them? No. They are white. You know the kind of plates and all the Muslims have? Mm. Huh? There's a white and there's a colored border, mm -hmm. green or blue. So we had those kind of vessels. So he was wiping one of them and suddenly the bowl slipped and it fell. And one little chip from the corner. He saw it but then he didn't pick it up. Then the chip says, don't you want to take me up and, I'm sorry, pick me up and put in, me in my right place? He says, oh. So he goes and brings it and he puts it where it should be. And then after some of this experiences, you know, what we call the dining room is the melting point of all sadhaks. All the egos are really scrubbed all around. You had that experience? No? Most sadhaks are always put in the dining room first. And then after some time, Mother sent word through Ravindraji, asked Sundaram to go to the press and take charge of everything that is Gujarati. Oh. So in, before that, Jaintilal was handling a little, but then he knew where Sundaram is and where he was. So Sundaram became in charge of Gujarati. All books were printed. New books were translated. The Gujarati quarterly was started, Dakshina. So Puraniji felt the need. Okay, we must have something to give to our sadhaks in Gujarat. So they sat down and what name to give to the journal. They brought out the Vedas and there are five goddesses. And from them they chose the name Dakshina. It is nothing to do with the South, Dakshin, but it is the goddess of discernment. You see, discernment yes. and is a very specific word. It's not the, uh, what is the other word close to it? Comprehension, understanding. Huh? Comprehension. Anyway, it teaches you what is right and wrong. 
which is to be chosen and which is to be neglected or put aside. That is the goddess of discernment. So they chose the name and they started work, Mother blessed them. First issue was out. Within two months they had to reprint the first issue. And then it went on and on. And the sadhaks from Gujarat would wait. When is the next issue coming? When is Like, you know, when Shirobindu's Arya was coming out, so many youngsters everywhere were reading it. Kapali Shastri was one. Then there was one T.K. Kodandraman. And many others I have seen. They were all starting from their first steps were from the Arya. So then that's how things started developing. And then he, he was still a poet also. So they would call him from Gujarat, you come to our college, give us lectures on such and such a poet, give us lectures on such and such a subject. And then when he told Mother, Mother, they were asking me to come. Yes. And she puts in his hand the flower, silence. So he has to give lectures with the flower, silence. So then after some time, Lots of developments took place. Then in 68, there was the beginning of Auroville, right? Yes. So at that time, he was in Gujarat, and there was a camp, Shibir, what we call. He used to have a Shibir or two every year in Gujarat. He would go for a month or so, People would gather around him. In the beginning it was just 50, then it started increasing. Everything had been really pre-planned. Up to 200, 250 people staying together around Sundaram and totally concentrated on the mother and Sri He would talk to them, explain to them. We have those talks. I will be giving it to you. So then when 68, when such a shivir was going on, they said, if there is an Auroville in Pondicherry, why can't we have an Auroville in Gujarat? Then my father said, yes, why not? You put your prayer on paper, I will take it to the mother, and we shall see what she does. So there were 42 people who signed the prayer. My father brought the paper here, and then, while taking it to Mother, he added another paper from his side, saying, Mother, if you approve of this prayer, then please give us a name for that town. Ah. So Mother immediately wrote, Om Puri, O-M-P-U-R-I, in English, in Sanskrit. So then that work is going on but at a far slower speed than our Auroville here. But things are moving. Lots of difficulties are there. Human nature is very active there. So, but it is moving and it's beautiful, a place. Beautiful. So that was Ompuri developing around my father also there. And then because he used to go and spend so much time there, when he came back here, the issue would be late because there was nobody who could translate. Oh. And I don't know. You know Usha Ben Desai? Mm -hmm. hmm? Their father was a lawyer. And he wrote a letter to Sundram. I am so grateful to you that you have created a new Gujarati language for the works of Mother and Sri Yes. Because after that I see others who have translated or are translating even now. They use idioms and phrases which are coming down from years. Sundram never had such a thing in his writing. He would arrange the words in such a way that there was a rhythm. So that rhythm point no other translator has been able to feel and bring it out in Gujarati. They say he has developed a new language. 
And rhythm is music also. Hmm? Rhythm and music go together. Oh. It's a musical language. Yes, and then you see when the shibis used to be there, he would have one, he would write specifically for that shibir a song, sort of a prayer, sort of a description of the work <coughs> to be done in us, around us, and some artist would sing it. So in that way we have 24 shibir songs. It is there in those two CDs are there. A part of it is there. And then others have sung his poems and all. Those also are there. But he had studied music for nine years. He got that, you know, Sangeet Visharad? It's an honored degree. So when he would write a poem, he knew to which raga this has to be sung. And he would write it. He would write it. And then when the artist would start, he would say, you sing in this rag. And he would sit in front of him and then guide him. You know, this is not correct. This is how a word has to be kept together. You know, even now, there are singers when they sing, they split up one word and push them one half forward, one half backward, and link them up with the succeeding. It makes no meaning. You see, the meaning gets confused for the listener. But you have to keep one word in the music by itself. So that he was very particular. I want to get on to ask, you had mentioned Kapali Shastri. Yes. Did you know him? Oh, yes. Can and you I loved him. I still love him, Nara. We were kids. Hmm? Same 13, 14. And he was our Sanskrit teacher. Before any, we would go to the dining room instead, go to the school and play in the courtyard, which is now the playground. <coughs> then where is our projector room? Nirmal and Arun, their work. Mm -hmm. That was our Sanskrit class. Oh. So earliest we would go there to put our books before going down and playing. He would be sitting there. He was such an imposing figure. We would make no noise, quietly put our back and back out. Then when the school bell would ring, we would come in. And then he would teach us shlokas and all. But then at one point, <coughs> I think it must have been when he started going more and more inward. And then he left teaching. And at that time our Krishna Kumari ji, you know, and her elder sister Rajkumari, she had an elder sister, Rajkumari. I didn't know her. Yeah. She took over. Then when the elder sister couldn't continue, Krishna Kumari ji took over. So we have had a good chain of Sanskrit scholars teaching us. And then we would see him coming and going in the ashram, going to the mother for pranams. And that was it, such a fine person, such a fine. But then lately, when I started doing some work, I started reading his books. And some specific f number four, I think, and all, where he's corresponding with mother, talking to mother, interviews with mother. That volume is quite unique. Kapali Shastri was, he started with Arya. He was in Chennai, and he had gone to one book shop, not a bookshop somewhere. I hope I'm not mixing up details. And there in one shopkeeper's, he saw this Arya. He picked it up. He's, that man said, you can take it, I have no use of it, I'm not interested. Then every month he would go to get that. And then he started coming here also. But Raman Maharshi Ashram, Bhagwan Raman Maharshi was his main guru at yes. that time. So he would come and go, come and go. Then at one point, mother asked him, when he said, mother, I'm going tomorrow to Raman Maharshi, do you have to go? Oh. It must have taken him aback. But he said, yes, mother, I want to go. So he went. And then slowly, slowly, 
I think after Raman Maharshi passed away or something, he settled down here. And he was in Madhav's house, same house, yes. he stayed there. Hmm. And you did, you, did you know Nolini very well? You took letters to Nolini. Oh, yes. See, that tell, tell us about Nolini. Uh, got when tangent. Sundram had come with via Purani ji. So letters coming to Sundram, where would they go? So they would come along with Purani ji's letters. Purani and Sundram letters together. Early time, the Purani ji's letters would be brought to the ashram and kept on Nalini Das table. So there was a place where Purani's letters to be kept. When Sundaram came, Sundaram and Purani's letters on the same spot. So then my father used to collect. Coming back home from the press, he would go to the ashram, meet Purani ji, collect the letters, then come home. So then when he stopped going to the ashram at that time, the work came to me after I finished my school and all. So I would gently look, where is Nalinida? Am I going to disturb him or something? Then quietly take, pick up the things and go. Usually he wouldn't say anything. So I said, oh, so you have come. There are many letters today. Some comment he would give, you know, communicate with me. So that was a very happy relation. And one another incident, I don't know, I should mention it. Anyway, let it go. My father was in Gujarat. He had emergency prostrate operation. And they telephoned me, okay, your ticket is bought, you come. So I went up straight to Champakla. I said, I have to go. I want the mother's blessings. It was in the afternoon around quarter to one or something. Then he wrote down, you are a teacher, how can you go? I will not give you blessings. I didn't know what to do. So I just came down and went to Nalinida's room. So he didn't give you the blessings. I will give you. I didn't even tell him, you see. So then he took one blessings. This is for Sundaram. He put another one on top. This is for you. And don't mix up the two. So then I went and there was a, everything was already organized and over. So it means without being told anything, he knew yeah. what is happening. Let's take a break for a few minutes. If you want. And then... We'll continue.